Okay, so here on this slide, we have a basic summary of what we just talked about um, from the first, the Mendel intro, where we have a purple flowered true breeding parent and a white flowered true breeding parent. We cross them together and we see in the next generation, all the offspring are purple and they're as purple as the parents, the purple parent. <laughs> so there's some genetic terms on here. Um, the P, this means the parental generation. And then F1, this stands for the first generation of offspring. And F2 is the second generation of offspring. So F actually is, a, is a Latin and it stand, stands for a Latin word, which is um, filial, which means son. Um, a lot of these words in genetics are Greek, uh, oh, sorry, Latin. Uh, because genetic, genetics has actually been around for a very long time. We, you know, we understand more about it now on a DNA level, but honestly, for generations, humans have been doing genetics. We've been breeding dogs, we've been breeding domestic animals, we've been breeding food, crops, you know. So um, a lot of these words are old because we've been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, anyway, uh, so in Me the first Mendel experiment we talked about, you breed together purple and white and you get purple flowered offspring. Uh, the next experiment we didn't quite address yet was what Mendel did next was to take siblings from this F1 generation and cr cross them, breed them with each other. So it's kind of like breeding brother with sister kind of idea if you are using this to talk about animals. So uh, this purple flowered parent and this white flowered parent had made five peas each pea grew up into its own flower, they, into its own plant. They were all purple flowered and they bred one of the purple flowered offspring with another purple flowered offspring and then saw what happened in the next generation, which we show down here as the F2. And in the F2, what Mendel discovered was that he had a three to one ratio of three purple flowered plants for every one white flowered plant. So white flowers popped back out again in the F2 generation. There was no sign of white here at all, but it must have been there. Somehow the ability to be white was hidden inside these, these plants. And when you bred them together to make the next generation, it will pop back out. All right, so that's the kind of basic background here and let's talk about what's actually going on at the chromosome level to explain these patterns. Okay, so let's go back to the first, the, the first part, the, the parental generation. Here is our purple flowered parent. So I'm going to put purple parent. All right, that was the, the dad in our example. And here is our white flowered parent over here. Now, we have to think about what made the petals purple and what made the petals white in the first place. And nowadays, because we know about genetics and DNA and proteins, we can say that there, there's the purple flowered plants have the ability to make a protein that goes in the petals and makes the petals look purple. So the purpleness of the petals is down to this protein that is in the petals. All right, now we know that proteins are built because you have instructions on how to build them and those instructions are the genes that are encoded in your DNA, all right? So this, there's, so we're gonna say there's a P gene. Now, the P gene comes in different versions. So if we use an uppercase P, this is the gene that makes a protein. So it's a gene or instructions that make a protein that folds up and looks purple. All right, so that would be the, the big P gene. Now, that gene uh, over multiple generations, it's, it gets copied and copied and copied and passed down, and sometimes errors sneak into that copying, and so that gene can get mutated and sometimes you may get a different version. I'm gonna use a lowercase p. I'm gonna try and make it look different to my uppercase p. And this is a version of the uppercase p gene. And it's a gene, but it's a gene that makes a protein. 
but it doesn't fold up quite right because it's got an amino acid wrong in the sequence. So something, something's mutated, something's changed. And when the protein folds up, it looks white. All right, so we've got the same gene, the P gene, but the P gene comes in two versions. Uh, one version where the sequence is correct, or like normal kind of, I guess you could say, and when that gene is expressed, is transcribed and translated, it makes a protein that folds up and cre creates a purple color in the cells. If the, the sequence of the gene is a little bit messed up, when it's transcribed and translated, the protein that is made doesn't fold up quite the same way. There's a little kink in it and it reflects light differently and the protein ends up looking white instead of purple. And so you end up with a purple flower. All right, so if we take that idea of genes and relate it back to the uh, plants we were looking at in the chromosomes. So we're gonna use this purple or sort of dark colored bar to represent the uh, the the version of the gene the the that is correct, the big P, all right, the purple, the purple protein, all right? And we also know that P plants are diploid, and if you're diploid, a diploid organism, it means that you've got two copies of every chromosome. So if this says chromosome one, I don't know if it is, but let's just say, for example, this is chromosome one, this P plant has two, this purple flower P plant parent has two copies of chromosome one because it's a diploid organism. And so if this P gene is carried on chromosome number one, uh, because this is a true breeding purple flower parent and, and all its ancestors have always been purple flowers, we can make a pretty good guess that on both of the chromosome ones that this plant has, there's a copy of the big P version of this gene. All right, and that's why there's a big, a dark purple bar here and a dark purple bar here. All right, so we can say that this parent has two copies of the P gene because it's diploid. It has two copies of every gene it has. And so, and we can make a good guess because it's true breeding purple that both copies are capital P. So this, this chromosome one has a capital P gene on it and this chromosome has a capital P gene on it. We can use the same logic when we talk about the white parent. Now the white parent plant has all of its ancestors always white, so it's constantly making that white protein, for example. And so that white protein is made by the lowercase p version of the gene. And so again, a diploid organism is gonna have two chromosome ones, and it has a little p version of the p gene on both the chromosomes. All right, so it was a long explanation. I hope that kind of made some sense. Now. That's the parents. But if they're gonna make babies, they've got to make eggs or sperm. And so if this is, this is the purple flowered mom, and this is the uh, white flowered dad, when the mom makes her eggs, she has to make sure that each egg gets only one of each pair of chromosomes. Remember when we learned about meiosis, and if you have a pair of chromosomes, when you make an egg, you only have to take one of the pair into the egg. That's the whole point of the separation during meiosis, to make sure that you separate the pairs and put one of them into the egg, into one egg and the other one into the other egg. So when this mom makes her eggs, and gametes, remember, is, an, is a word for, is the gender neutral name for egg or sperm, a haploid cell. She, some of her um, eggs, some of her gametes will get this chromosome and some of her gametes will get that chromosome. In this case though, it doesn't matter which chromosome they get because both chromosomes have an uppercase P. All right, so now what I'm gonna do now is create something called a Punnett square, which you've probably seen before, and it helps you to predict what's gonna happen when you um, breed or cross two organisms together. Now, when you do a Punnett square, there's a couple of um, things that genetics sort of rules of genetics. One is that you always put the mom's gametes along the top here. So um, the mom's gametes. So when this purple flowered mom pea plant makes her eggs, some of her eggs are gonna have this chromosome in it and some of her eggs are gonna have that chromosome in it. It's like a 50-50 split actually. 50% of them will have the one on the left and 50% will have the one on the right. 
So we can say, if this is going to be the mom's gametes along the top, 50%, half of mom's gametes are going to have a big P, which is going to come from that chromosome, and half of the mom's gametes are going to have that chromosome, which is going to be another big P. So it's not very exciting. It's big P, big P. Um, but yeah, mom's gametes are all going to be the same. Now, when the dad makes his sperm, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to do meiosis to separate the pair of chromosomes and make sure that this one goes into 50% of the sperm and this one goes into 50% of the sperm. But again, in this case, because these are the same, they both got a little P on them. All the sperm are going to have a little P. There's no real difference. And we, in genetics, we always put the dad's gametes down the side. So dad's gametes are going to go here. And dad is can make little pea sperm. That's if they go, if the sperm get that chromosome. Or they can make little pea sperm. That's if that's the sperm that he makes. All right, so this is a big mess. Let me tidy it up. So the dad can make little pea sperms and the mom, or pollen in this case, because it's a plant, and the mom can make big pea eggs. And so at random, one of these eggs is going to meet one of these sperm when you, when a bee brings the pollen or when Mendel pretends to be a bee with a paintbrush. And so what are all the possible things that could come out here? Well, this egg could meet this sperm, in which case you get the big P from the egg and the little P from the sperm. This egg can meet this sperm, which in which case you get the big P from the egg and the little P from the sperm. This egg could meet this sperm, in which case you get the big P from the egg and the little P from the sperm, and this egg could meet this sperm. Again, a big P, little P. So you can see here that it doesn't matter which way around you make the babies, it doesn't matter which egg meets which sperm, they're all going to be big P, little P, 100%. And we also know from looking at the plants that this equals a purple flower. Because we know that 100% of the babies in the F1 are, came out purple flowered, right? Okay, so that's a sort of, that sort of links the ideas of meiosis and chromosomes back to the ideas of genetics and a Punnett square. Now, let's uh, get a, a fresh thing here and say, look at this, the, the second cross, I'm sorry, look at this cross here. When, he, when Mendel crossed the siblings, and saw this in the F2. All right, so we're gonna cross a mom who we know is big P, little p, with a dad who we know is big P, little p. Now the mom and the dad both look alike, they're purple. Um, and just looking at them, you wouldn't necessarily know if they were big P, little p, but we do know that they were that because we can go back to their parents and so we can kind of figure that out, right? So if we do a Punnett square again, just like we did on the other slide, I'm gonna ooh, try and make it not too squishy. All right, so remember once again, you put the mom along the top, the mom goes here, and the dad goes here. All right, and so what has my mom, what has the mom got in terms of versions of the P gene that she could put in her eggs? Well, she's got the big P allele on one of her chromosomes and she's got the little P allele on the other one of the pair. So half of her eggs are gonna get the big P chromosome and half of the eggs are gonna get the little P chromosome. All right. Now, what about the dad? When he makes sperm, 50% of his sperm are gonna have big P's in them and 50% of his sperm are gonna have little peas in them. I should say pollen really, but so we're talking about plants. All right, so then here's the things the mom can make along the top. Here's the things the dad can make down the side. Any one of these things could come into contact with any one of the other one during fertilization. So what can happen here? If big P meets big P, the baby's gonna be like this. If this one meets this one, it's gonna be like that. If this one meets this one, it's gonna be like that. And if the two little peas meet, you're gonna get this. Now, this is what happens in our F2. 
And we can see here that this one's going to be purple, this one's going to be purple, this one's going to be purple, but this one is going to be white because it doesn't have a single copy of the uh, gene that allows you to make the purple colored protein, right? This one can make purple protein, like it's got like, two copies of the gene, so it's making purple protein. This one can make purple protein, fine. This one can make purple protein, fine. This one can't make any purple protein, which is why it's gonna end up looking white. And if you look at the numbers here, this explains why you've got one, one, two, three, purple flowers for every one white flowered plant in the F2.